Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, warshippers of all ages, welcome back to YouTube. My name is C-Raptor, and today we are going to continue our Learn to Play the American Heavy Cruiser line as we take a look at Tier 9's USS Buffalo. You've heard me mention this in earlier videos, that Buffalo is a bit of an outlier, a bit of a weird anomaly here at Tier 9. And not because the ship is going to offer you performance-wise anything out of the ordinary, but the hull, the gun layout, and just in general, the, the kind of the overall characteristics of the ship are very different than what you got used to at Tier 7, at Tier 8, and what you're going to have again at Tier 9. Not in a bad way, not really, just different. And so what the, all of the lessons that you've learned about about you know what to fire your guns at, gun ricochet angles, all of those lessons, all of that is still valid. All of that still applies. But you're gonna take it's gonna take some time to adapt to this hull, how it moves, what stealth it has or what stealth it doesn't have, um, what it's vulnerable to, and of course, because now you're getting tier nine, you're getting even slightly more difficult matchmaking than you've been used to. And so, yeah, let's talk about some things here. Um some of this is going to be repetition from Baltimore because the ships are very, very similar. But some of it is going to be very different, and we're going to highlight those points uh, as we get to them. So, as we do, let's start at the top. Let's have a look at survivability. 47,800 hit points is base. I'm not running survivability expert on this captain. 47,500 hit points is, well, it's pretty good for this tier. It's not best in tier. Now... Let's 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 caveat this for a couple of things. Tier nine is where you start to find some really, really funky ships that fall into the cruiser matchmaking slot in World of Warships. Things like um, tier nine German premium Siegfried that basically have Turpitz guns, right? Those are those are 15 inch guns on a cruiser. Um, things like Alaska, right? The big American 12 inch guns. Uh, things like Kronstadt, which is the, uh, those, those Russian laser rifles. The only thing that keeps Kronstadt from being a mini Stalingrad is her, uh, her Sigma and her dispersion curve is very different. It's, it's very, very close to being the same guns that Stalingrad mounts up at tier 10. So there are some nasty, nasty cruisers with, with big punches and big health pools in this tier. You are not that, okay? However, the other ships you should be comparing yourself to uh, traditional quote unquote heavy cruisers, things like Rune, San Luis, um, Johan de Witt, maybe a kind of on the high end, maybe, but close enough. Uh, Brindisi and, and possibly again, Drake and Johan, you know, a little higher on the, the gun caliber, but certainly co uh, comparable in the health pool. You're right in the middle. You're right where you want to be. You have a very respectable health pool for this tier. So it feels good. 4% torpedo protection, worst in tier. Worst in tier. I've been singing this song all the other videos we've done. I'm going to continue to sing it. Don't take torpedoes. Do anything you can to avoid a torpedo in this ship, even if it means losing a salvo, you know, whatever. It, pr prioritize your own survivability as best you can. Don't take torpedoes. It's very, very, very unpleasant. Armor layout. Now, the good news here is that basically the armor layout, well, it's kind of a double-edged sword. I say good news. It's good and bad, right? The armor layout is more or less identical to what you had down at Tier 8 USS Baltimore. So the good news is you already know what you're dealing with. The bad news is there's just more things that can crush you and slap you silly in this matchmaking. So, I mean, you don't have anything new to learn, but you have a whole lot more things to be cautious of. Um, so quick review. Uh, you have a 27 millimeter bow. This is the same bow armor you had again at tier eight. So this will um, prevent 15 inch shells and below from overmatching your bow armor. You won't find too many 14 inch armed battleships in your matchmaking bracket. And when you do, it's going to be because you're top tier. We're I'm looking at you, King George V, right? Guys, the guys that are down at tier seven, maybe some tier eights. However, you will find some of those aforementioned big old cruisers that magically have, you know, 12 inch guns, right? We talked about, you know, we talked about Alaska, for example, there's an Alaska on the opposing team. That guy cannot overmatch your bow. He can probably hurt you really bad, but he cannot overmatch your bow. Uh, your belt armor is the same as Baltimore. That's 152 millimeters. Um, the overall length of the ship is longer. We're going to talk more about the turret arrangement and how it works in a minute, but you can already see, right, I've got, I've got two super-firing turrets forward, two super-firing super tur uh, super turrets on the aft end. 
So that just means there's just more citadel to hit, right? The overall citadel of the ship is simply bigger because the overall size of the ship is bigger. So you have to be a little more cautious with Buffalo than you do maybe with Baltimore or Des Moines. There's just more to hit. There's more ship to love for those battleship shells, right? Um, but she's very, I mean, the armor scheme basically identical to Baltimore. You can see the magazine, the forward and the after magazines, well buried in the hull. None of that forward magazine touches the outer hull stuff like we had down at Tier 7. And, uh, and yeah, so uh, armor scheme, you should be well familiar with this by now. You're still also running 27 millimeters through the central decking. That means that uh, most other 203 millimeter armed heavy cruisers, when they fire HE at you, will full pin your deck as well. So basically anything shooting at you is going to hurt. You're going to feel, unless it's a destroyer. Yeah, that guy might not hurt so much, but basically anything else, you're going to notice. Maneuverability and concealment. 34.7 knots, that is with a speed flag. Buffalo's base speed is 33 knots. 800 meters on the turning circle, 11.2 on the rudder shift. That's not the buffed rudder shift. That is the standard stock rudder shift. Um, the turning circle is, uh, it's a, I won't say it's high. It's a little suboptimal for this tier. Um, most of the other quote unquote, you know, traditional heavy cruisers that you're trying to compare yourself to, the, the ships that we mentioned earlier, they turn better than this. But again, a lot of that comes down to their turret arrangements are very different, and and Buffalo is a longer overall length, right? All these, you know, you, we have three turrets up to this point. Now we have four. The ship displaces more to accommodate all the extra gun, uh, the extra turret, the extra barbette, the extra magazine space, all the extra shells, and the ship is longer. And therefore, it has a longer turning circle. The rudder shift is, it's not great. It's not great. This ship just handles worse than Baltimore. I mean, it's going to. It's a bigger ship with more firepower. It cannot be helped. So earlier in earlier videos, you've heard me encourage you to maybe take a you know, first time you've ever played this ship. Let's say you're moving up the line. You've never played Buffalo, a game in your life. The first time you get this ship, I would strongly encourage you, take it into co-op, take it into a training room, spend some time getting to understand how it handles. Do yourself a favor don't wander into a random battle in your very first game in a Buffalo and wonder why you got crushed by a battleship at 18 kilometers because you got caught broadside in a turn because this thing just takes longer to turn, longer to maneuver than Baltimore does. Get used to the handling of the ship. It is very, very different, okay? Um, concealment, 10.7 kilometers. That is fully stealth. Um, that is obviously worse than Baltimore. This is a bit of a downgrade, right? You've gone, you know, we, we, we got the, the stealth steadily improved from tier six to tier seven to tier eight. Now here at tier nine, we take a step backwards. That feels a little bad. In truth, it's workable. And, and I think some of the reason this stealth is what it is, is it's a little bit of a balancing mechanic by wargaming. Starting at tier eight, right? We talked about this in the Baltimore video. You get 10 kilometer radar, Giving a ship like this with 12 barrels of, of, of 8 inch high explosive a radar radius that is that close, like if you were to give this thing Baltimore detection, it would be insane. It would be insane. The ambushes it could pull off on opposing destroyers would be horrible. So, one of the things they do to kind of balance the ship a little bit this extra firepower, this extra throw weight, these extra shells the ship's a little less stealthy. And it sort of makes sense. It is a bigger ship, like physically larger as well. So this is unfortunately kind of the worst of the detection at the high end of the line, but um, it is manageable. Your radar range, of course, we talked about that 10 kilometers, your stealth here, 10.7. This is still really good. Like when you compare to her contemporaries, this is still a very, very, very stealthy ship. For starters, there are only two tier nine cruisers that get under 10 kilometers stealth at all. And that's Abuki and Tulsa. Um, there are, there is only one other ship, two other ships, as I look down the list, um, that have more stealth than you, and that's Drake and Johan de Witt. So that means that Buffalo, in a, in a field of um, three, six, nine, twelve, about, about 17 or 18 tier nine cruisers is in the top five. So this is still a very, very good number. It's just, you know, you get, you get a little spoiled down at tier eight, having that radar and your stealth bubble about the same, you lose that here. And it's the price you pay for having access to the heal, more health, and some other things. And we'll talk through some of that when we get to consumables. So keep that in mind. One of the other things you're going to have to learn to work a little bit in your Buffalo is your aerial detection is no longer matching your aircraft, uh, your AA bubble, right? So you are now spotted by planes at six and a half kilometers, 
but your AA defense only goes out to 5.8. So there is a very narrow window in which carriers or uh, airdropped fighters, for example, uh, can spot you that your anti-aircraft cannot shoot the planes that are spotting you down. Keep that in mind. In a game with a carrier, that can cost you big. So you got to just keep that in the back of your mind and, and con your ship uh, accordingly uh, when you find yourself in those situations. All right, main battery. We're paying a lot for this main battery, aren't we, right? We're more stealthy. Uh, I'm mean, sorry, we're less stealthy. We're a little slower. We're uh, a little, we handle a little worse. What are we getting? Well, you're getting now 12 barrels of these fabulous American 203s. We've seen these before. You're well used to these by now. I've got a pair super firing forward and a pair super firing aft. Base reload on these guns is 11 seconds. So not quite as good as Baltimore, which was 10 seconds but almost, and I get a whole extra turret. Hmm. The other thing is, is that I also get access to upgrade slot six, which means then I can take main battery modification three and lower that reload even further, just like you see there on the display there, 9.7 seconds. Baltimore's main battery, which of course is all she gets, no torpedoes on this cruiser, you're an all-gun American cruiser, it's what you get, um, is, is, is amazing. You can do really, really, really good work with these guns. Now the HE is, as we've you know, been pointing out up the line, fairly pedestrian. On this reload, with these shells, your HE DPM is actually, wow, is it really that high? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm mistaken. Your HE DPM is actually among the best in the tier. My apologies. I didn't, I didn't look that close. I was mainly looking at the AP. Your AP DPM is absolutely tied for best in tier, right? Um, and again, it, some of it is down to those American super heavy shells. Um, and some of it is down to that reload and the simple throw weight. The main battery is worth the pain that you're going to put up with playing the ship because... Well, it just is. <laughs> it just really is. This ship punishes opposing destroyers in ways that, uh, in, like that alpha strike. It's all about that alpha strike, right? You're, you sneak up on a destroyer or they don't know the air. You catch them in a radar and suddenly here comes a volley of 12. It's almost as bad as being caught out by a Zhao, right? If you're a destroyer player and a tier 10 Japanese cruiser Zhao catches you on the surface and you, you take a salvo from that guy. That is some of the worst pain you can feel as a destroyer. Buffalo is capable of doing that, and she brings her own radar to the party. And then, of course, you also get that amazing, the amazing American piercing shells with the ricochet angles um, and this amazing reload. Like, this main battery is so, so, so good. So you should be well used to these shells by now. Again, you got used to them at, Buff at Baltimore. Now that you're at Buffalo, same velocity, same lead times, all of that. You just get an extra turret and everything reloads just a little faster if you put main, main battery mod 3 in. Now, one more thing we have to talk about with Buffalo's main battery are firing angles. We haven't really hit this in the ships up to this point, largely because, well, most of the time, certainly at tier 7, tier 8, you kind of treat that, that stern turret as an afterthought a little bit, don't you, right? Like, you want to be firing it if you can, but if you, if you think you're going to get slapped around or your ship's in risk, you just kind of forget about it and you take the other two-thirds of your firepower and you point it where it needs to go and you do your thing. Buffalo, however, you sort of don't want to do that, right? Because now you're not giving up a third. You're giving up half your firepower. That feels terrible, right? It's the same, same reason you don't want to be doing it with uh, Hindenburg, right? Or Brindisi, same idea. So you kind of need to understand what firing angles you can get. Um, the good news is the firing angles on this ship are pretty good, okay? You can get all four turrets. I'll put the graphic up here real, real briefly. You can get all four turrets firing 35 degrees off of either side of the bow or 31 degrees off of either side off the stern. So that does mean that she is perhaps a little better in a kiting position, but if you end up charging someone, you can turn briefly, get your salvo off, and then swing your butt back and, you know, throw the start of the ship back and hopefully give them a little bit worse angle so they're not going to full pin or, God forbid, citadel you on the way in. So if you find yourself in a brawling situation, understanding those angles is a good thing. Uh, also, you know, if you, get, if you can get, get all of your guns on target, that tells you, hey, I know now what angle I'm showing the opponent. Certain ships, certain cruisers, non-Americans most of the time, you know, won't be able to get your, their shells to bite in, right? You'll be showing them almost an, almost an auto ricochet angle 
Um, however, if it's an American cruiser, you know you better not take that risk because you probably aren't showing him an auto ricochet angle. So yeah, feels bad. But yeah, the gun turret angle is definitely something you want to keep in mind on Buffalo uh, when you're fighting when you're fighting the ship. Main battery, really good. Firing angles, excellent for a, a 12 gun cruiser. Lots to like there. Airstrike. I mean, you should use this by now. Uh, what else can I say? Basically the same airstrike you had down at Baltimore. I think maybe you have an extra kilometer of range. I think Baltimore's might have been six kilometers. I didn't check that close. But basically, two flights, two bombs each. Big old American depth charges. I mean, yay. Throw them at submarines. Have fun. A defenses. This is some place there I would love to be singing Buffalo's praises. And in truth, her A suite is not amazing. The kind of somewhat disappointing thing is it's not a significant step up from Baltimore. Why is that? Well, her anti-aircraft suite is almost the same. For starters, her long-range bubble is based on the same, exact same configuration. She has six double-barreled 5-inch 38s, right? So that's the long-range oar right there. That's exactly the same thing Baltimore had. So she puts up the exact, more or less the exact same flat configuration and the exact same uh, long-range aura DPS. Her mid-range bubble um, is, she has to have a few more barrels of the 40 millimeter Bofors. You see there, she's got um, 11 quadruple tubs instead of 12, but... Whereas Baltimore didn't have any doubles, Buffalo does here. So when told, I have 52 barrels of 40 millimeter Bofors versus 48 barrels of 40 millimeter Bofors down at tier eight, which means the mid-range bubble is a notch better, like 20 or 30 points of DPS better. Is it? Is it going to make or break the ship? No. Is it a little better? Yeah, it's a little better. Um, she does have significantly more Orlicons, but again, this is not what you really want to be looking at when you judge the AA of a ship, because these are basically self-defense guns. This is, is somebody dropping me with um, dive bombers? Then yes, these will, these will do nasty things. If somebody's dropping torpedoes or rockets on me or skip bombs, these guns will probably never, ever factor into any of the AA damage you deal to the opposing planes, and that always feels really bad. Um, so yeah, the A suite is good, but it's not a significant step up, right? A lot of other ships get um, get a big buff, and well, that's unfortunate. Now the good news is is that it's still one of the best anti aircraft suites of any tier nine cruiser. Like even the, even some of the big ones, right? Some of those big 12, 12 inch armed cruisers have less AA than this. The one ship that just runs away with this category at tier nine is, of course, the Dutch. If you understand how the Dutch anti aircraft suites uh, work and how they fit together and how they're designed they're always going to wreck this category. They just destroy the curve. Um, if you're a carrier player, the last thing you want to be doing is tangling with a Dutch cruiser. Um, Buffalo's AA here is simply good, above average, right? Is it the best in tier? No, it's like second or third on the list, but it's pretty darn sweet. Um, let's see, I think we've hit all the high points. Let's go have a look at uh, modules. You're going to see most of what we've been talking about repeated here, right? Uh, main armaments mod one in slot two. I'm going to skip I mean, slot one. Excuse me. I'm going to skip slot two for a minute. Um, aiming systems mod in slot three. Again, you could take main battery mod if you wished. Perfectly valid choice. I don't recommend a mod, in my opinion. This still remains just over-investing in your anti-aircraft. If you're going to div with a carrier, you think you're going to use out of it, go for it. For regular randoms, I wouldn't do it. Slot four. Um, I've got propulsion in here. I think that's, that's a decent choice. I think this airstrike mod is also really good. I'm coming to really appreciate this mod on cruisers, particularly heavy cruisers. Getting getting those airstrikes back quicker to hunt submarines and get more damage onto them quicker while they're down and you can spot them, this, this, this particular modification is really growing on me. Now, Buffalo, I think you can make a valid case for the steering gears mod as well, right? We talked about that 11.2 seconds being pretty kind of not great. Uh, you could get it down to nine seconds. So, I mean, that's not that's not that's nothing to sneeze at. So I think this is also a valid choice. I would not take a damage control system. Anytime you're um, burning or flooding, you're going to want to be either you know, probably repairing or putting that out. Um, concealment to me is your best choice for slot five. Again, just because you're trying to maximize the ability to close with areas you want to control with the radar. Um, if you were going to try and play Buffalo as like a longer range cruiser, play her back. Steering gears mod is would be an acceptable choice, but I just don't think if you're going to equip radar on this ship, you really, really, really want to take concealment. You want to minim you want to minimize your detection radius as low as you can go. And in, in my opinion, you're crazy to take anything other than main battery mod three in slot six. I would not take the gun range. We didn't talk about it very much. Buffalo's main battery range is pretty bad. Like 15 and a half kilometers for a tier nine cruiser feels terrible you're going to be tempted to take the range i don't recommend it personally in my opinion 
Buffalo is best played in that mid-range, kind of, I'm going to say, 12 to 15 kilometers, unless you know you're trying specifically trying to exert influence over uh, a cap circle and you have to move in close, in which case you really, 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 really want the reload. Um, with that said, if you'd prefer the range, this is a valid choice. Um, I would not take Auxiliary Armaments Mod 2 in this slot. It's really You'd really just be taking it for the A buff and... In very, very few instances, is that ever going to be worth it, in my opinion. So it's really up to which one of these. Do you want more range? Do you want better reload? I would encourage the reload, but again, I don't think there's a wrong way to play it either way, whichever whichever suits you best. Now, we didn't talk about slot two. Why? Because I'm going to make the same impassioned argument that I did when we played, when we talked about Baltimore, right? Baltimore gave you the choice between surveillance radar and fighter under no circumstances should you ever be taking fighters in world of warships if you have a choice and until they fix this consumable avoid it like the plague now buffalo does offer you spotting aircraft i personally feel like this is still a trap right but you will occasionally see people that play spotter aircraft buffalo or spotter aircraft des moines i think they're crazy and it all comes down to shell velocity these are not fast shells, right? You've, you've seen that. You've played Baltimore to get to this point in the line. You should know by now how long it takes these shells to come back down to Earth after you've sent them out at long range. At 15 and a half kilometers, the, max, the main battery range of the ship, it takes those shells long enough. Now you're going to make them go out to like 18 kilometers? They're going to take forever. The lead times you're going to have to put out are just nuts. I don't think this upgrade, I don't think this is worth it. I would not choose this. To me, the best utility you can get out of this ship is to take surveillance radar here in the second consumable slot and take the radar modification here in slot two. If you don't do this, I would encourage you to take the hydro mod uh, if you take hydro here. Um, otherwise, I don't know, take uh, take engineer protection perhaps or something. I don't know. Uh, any of these other, Almost any of these other ones probably isn't bad. Um, as we've said throughout the line, I vastly prefer to take defensive fire here in my first upgrade choice slot, but if you prefer the hydro, or if you know, let's say you're playing in ranked, you're playing tier 9 ranked, and you don't want, you think you're going to carry your dodge, you're going to look in the queue and see if there's a carrier and back out, you want to take the hydro, take the hydro. It's perfectly good, you'll get good work out of it. This, this configuration here with the hydro and the radar, I am a really good destroyer hunter with this configuration, right? So in, in ranked settings, Buffalo is an excellent ship should you do that. In just random play, I vastly prefer defensive fire just because, you know me, I've said it before, I love murdering planes, and this ship murders planes really good with defensive fire. Now, of course, at being Tier 9, you finally get access to a heal, and this is amazing. This really helps this ship out. Uh, her armor scheme will absolutely take some damage uh, along the way. You will get shot. You will take full pins at weird angles. Uh, it's just the way the ship is, and so you'll get a lot of good use out of this repair party. Commander skills... Um, I would strongly encourage you to pick up uh, one of the Doe brothers. I think they're available for coal in the armory um, because their skills are start to get really good at the high end of this line, particularly on Baltimore, or I like them here on Buffalo. For starters, the turret traverse is really, really good. You go from 15% to 20%. That's excellent. Buffalo tends to play as an open water cruiser. If you've seen people play Des Moines a lot in competitive play, it's a lot of snuggling up to an island. I'm using this island as extra armor. I'm using my bow guns and my radar to, to exert area control over a over portion of the map. Buffalo can do that, but to do that, you're giving up half her main battery, and Des Moines has almost twice my reload speed. I don't want to do that with my Buffalo, right? Not when I get the not, not given the option. Buffalo prefers to be open water, much like a Hindenburg or a Rune. And when you do that, in my opinion, this Grease the Gear skill becomes invaluable because you're going to be swapping those stern turrets around all over the place. This is really, really awesome. Gunfeeder is, in my opinion, a must-have skill for any heavy cruiser captain. And to go from 40% to 60% here with one of the Doe brothers, do it. That's so good. You're going to be constantly looking for opportunities to fire the AP. On these on this line of ships, almost more than any other heavy cruisers, you're going to have HE in the barrel and be like, oh, he's going to turn? He's going to turn and show me that shot? Load the AP, boys, and then suddenly, magically, three or four seconds later, bam, you've got AP slammed into the tubes, and off it goes downrange. Consumables enhancement, again, like on Baltimore, this is really about getting the extra radar duration. 
Fire focus fire training for me, this is about the extra flak, the extra priority sector reinforcement, and that little bit of extra uh, bonus to the airstrike reload time. Priority target is debatable. If you want to put these two points in Demolition Expert or somewhere else, I think that's reasonable. I like this skill on Buffalo in particular because of the way the ship handles. The turning circle is much larger. This gives me an opportunity to, to kind of make a better judgment call about whether or not I should be turning in certain situations. Adrenaline Rush, in my mind, an excellent just a great all-around skill for almost any ship you want to put it on. Heavy AP shells. I'm I'm going to want to be firing armor-piercing shells almost every chance I get. Why wouldn't I turn down 5% extra damage? Now, here at, at Tier uh, 9, definitely recommend Superintendent for sure. Because, again, not only am I getting the extra radar, the extra possibly you know, defensive fire or hydro, whatever I'm putting in that slot, I really here for the extra heal. You'll, there is an argument to be made that that four heals is crazy on a cruiser. That you will that you'll die before you use all four heals. That's not been my experience, right? It's not been my experience. This heal at maximum heal gets back about eight thousand damage, eighty two hundred, I think, with the flag, something along those lines. It's very common for me to go through three or four of them in a game. Like if you play this ship well, she'll hang in a game that long. You'll get use out of it. I highly encourage it. Uh, and of course, concealment. We talked about this earlier. You're, you're trying to maximize that concealment and close that radar gap as best you can. All right, guys. Well, listen. Uh, I think that's it. Oh, we can take actually let's take a quick look at flags. Um, this is basically the same flag setup, right? I don't want to explode. I've got a little more speed. Um, ships consumables reload faster. I've actually taken the heal flag now that I have a heal. Um, two, two extra two flags to pump my fire chance. Uh, the, my Sierra Bravo flag to buff whatever I put in this first. Uh, Consumable slot, and then, of course, I like this AA flag. A little bit extra, never hurt anybody. Okay, let's go take a look at some sample gameplay, guys, and I'll see you back here in a couple of minutes. All right, everybody, welcome into our little bit of sample gameplay here in Tier 9 American Heavy Cruiser, USS Buffalo. Now, this game is arms race, which means that, well... Some of the strengths of this ship may be not necessarily going to be the strengths that uh, you will find yourself employing in a domination game. Right? American heavy cruisers with that 10 kilometer radar love being able to hang out or camp near cap circles and either play, you know, support their destroyers and, you know, guarantee the cap, probably use the radar to keep opposing destroyers from getting in there and taking it away from, the, from their team. But arms race is a little different, isn't it, right? Because the objectives here spawn randomly, and they only require uh, an opposing ship or a friendly ship to touch them for a, a handful of seconds, maybe, what, what, one or two seconds before you pick up the buff. So defending those, keeping those out of the hands of uh, an opposing team, is very, very difficult. The best you can really hope for in an arms race game is to potentially catch a ship out that's making that kind of play and punish them heavily. And that's what I'm trying to do here as we spawn in on the south side of Land of Fire. So, ordinarily, you've heard me say this before, and I'll pause real briefly and talk about my early deployment thoughts. You've heard me say that uh, when you play a heavy cruiser, don't rush to the front. Don't be the first thing the enemy team sees, and certainly don't be the first thing that they shoot at. And I stand by those words. But, <laughs> I'm going to show you, show, you a, show you a, hmm, maybe you should think about it this way. On this particular map, I have quite a bit of island cover near this first little uh, damage buff over here up in front of my friendly Benham. And so I'm going to put on some speed. I started out, if you looked, I started out kind of slow. And then as I sort of wrapped my brain around what I wanted to do, I accelerated. I turned in behind this Benham. I'm going to use this island as cover to try to get as close to this buff up here as I can. Now, this, this particular buff is already well within my radar radius. There I am, detected briefly, so I know that there is absolutely a destroyer up here in front of me somewhere. He's going to lose sight of me in just in a moment. As I cut behind this island, the Friedrich's going to get one quick salvo off, but he's going to be astern of me. I'm moving just a little too quick for him. So I'm using this island. This is actually a fairly common tactic for this particular cap on this map. And there he is, the opposing Groningen. Groningen, Friesland, basically the same ship. He is all an all-gun destroyer with incredibly quick reload, but he has uh, no torpedoes and very, very good anti-aircraft fire. But more importantly, this guy is way, way, way inside my radar bubble. So all I have to do is sit here and try and punish him. Now, I cannot, I can no longer stop him from picking up this buff, which he does 
right there. That's the thing, right? He's determined to get it. He's determined to sell a chunk of his health to get it, and so he does. But what I can hope to do is prevent him from, from, uh, from basically from doing anything like that again by killing him and getting him off the board. Gronagin has American smoke. He tries to use it here, and I'm like, nope, you've got 35 seconds of a whole bunch of us trying to murderize you. Let's see what happens. And blessedly, to my team's credit, everybody gets in on this action. The Benham does, the Sharnhorst, he gives me a really good shot right there at the forward half of his ship and his superstructure. Um, I am running some of these shells into the island, and of course, the Frigic over there is making me pay despite the angle. But there are times in World of Warships as a radar cruiser that it's worth trading your health for moments like that. And early in this game, that is 100% worth it. I can recover about half of the damage that that Friedrich just did to me. And with the Gronagen dead, the Friedrich no longer has anyone to spot me. I put on some speed, turn back to the south, and off we go. So, an early example of using radar in arms race, not to necessarily defend things, which I could have done. I could have popped the radar a little earlier and possibly kept him off the buff, but I was more interested in making sure. I was like, okay, you can have the buff, but that's going to be the last thing you do in this game. And luckily, my team able to, able to help make that a reality. Enemy Friedrich is just charging super hard now down the nine line. There's three of us here to receive this push. The Sharnhorst, the Iwami, and myself. The Benham possibly able to impact this. He can dump torpedoes kind of out in that direction. We'll have to see what he chooses to do. Now, I'm starting off with the HE here, and you'll see me do this sometimes when I play uh, American Heavy Cruisers Buffalo in particular. I am trying to get a couple of fires lit and, and either force him to burn a DCP or just let them burn while uh, then I'll swap to the AP. At this point, the angle, I've swapped to the AP, but the angle is not great. The opposing flint shows up. Now, I want to I want to talk real briefly about something that I think the enemy mis uh, mistake the enemy team is making. It is not even five minutes into this game. Look how far onto our side of the map that flint has advanced. That is very bold with two battleships and a, a radar heavy cruiser around here. Right um, now, the flint has timed his little maneuver well. My guns are on reload. He's going to disappear right as they come up. I'm going to take a pot shot in the hopes that maybe I can land uh, a catastrophic hit, maybe, you know, a couple of citadels in here. And I am going to hit him, but it's not going to be the catastrophic hit that I would like. I mean, it's, it's nine shells. I hit him with nine out of 12, but nine of them were overpins, which feels terrible. And so now the Sharn Horse is going to feel the full fury of that Flint's main battery, while this secondary uh, Friedrich is still pushing in. Sharn Horse is very, very much in trouble. He's already turned around. He has got to get out of there as uh, I'm going to start back in on the Friedrich. Friedrich has put his fires out, but I've got the AP in the barrel, or I did for that salvo. You see there, 10k. You should be used to doing that in this line by now. It's a very, very common tactic, and you should be doing it every chance you get. AP into broadside battleships is 100% a great play. I took a salvo of HE, was rewarded with a fire, swapping back to the AP for this salvo. I think this one's about 8k or so. 5k, okay. Still not bad. The ability to do that every every uh, every you know nine and a half seconds here, and some of that is because of the buffs we're getting, but uh, but um, yeah, it's just oh, Buffalo is so good, so good. So the opposing team, it, it, these two ships has, have basically, in my opinion, made a mistake, right? They've they've pushed too deep too quickly in a game in a game mode that doesn't reward it, and so now I'm doing something perhaps a little foolish, but by showing the Friedrich this kind of a shot, but he is very very occupied. With that Awami, he's not really looking at me. I think he's realizing he's got to win the duel with that battleship before I'm even relevant. And, uh, well, it isn't going to happen. Between the Awami and I, we're going to put him out. And now that Flint is all alone. The nearest friendly ship to that guy has got to be almost 20 kilometers away from his current position. I have radar. He's a smoke cruiser. Let's go hunting. Yeah, baby. Let's do it. One of the things that my maneuvering, unfortunately, has done is it's taken me back, well, basically probably farther south than even where I spawn. The good news is the Benham up there continuing to do the Lord's work. We have a nice, solid lead. We've caught on, on ships. We've caught up on buffs. Um, the Flint is going to pick up the Iwami here. I think he clipped him with a torp, got a flood, some, a few more shells, puts him out, and there he goes. We have managed to retain the Sharnhorst. He's backed up behind me. And so now I have to go hunt this light cruiser. I've got this island in the way. I'm trying to think, okay, if I'm the Flint, what do I do? Do I keep pushing south? Do I turn and push back north? My expectation is for him to push south, which means, of course, 
as you know in World of Warship means he'll do exactly the opposite, and that's what happens. He actually uses this island to turn around and push due north up the nine, kind of that nine, ten line corridor, whereas I don't even catch sight of him here for a minute simply because the island is always, always blocking our line of sight to each other. I could radar. He's well within my radar bubble, but I'm holding the radar intentionally. If I burn it now and he tries to smoke, he'll have another almost two minutes that he can just do whatever he wants in that radar bubble, and I can't be a threat to him. I'm trying to catch him on the surface, uh, snuff him out the hard way, right? You know, spot him on the surface, and then start punishing him. So I'm not going to be the one to pick him up. As you see, the, our friendly Benham pushing south, rolling south, pursued by the York of the North Carolina. As he comes around that island off to his port side, there you go. He catches the flint out. And now with AP in the barrel and a, what is really a terrible angle, but I managed to catch this guy with a lot of full pins, five full pins there, half his HP. He probably thinks he got just got hit by a battleship. I mean, with a hit like that. So he's going to smoke, try to preserve his HP, and now you see why I held the radar, right? Because now I'm going to I'm continuing to fire at him because I can see him. There's no reason not to. But in a moment, we are going to lose sight of him briefly. Put the HE in because he was showing me such a terrible stern shot. But now that he's turning back to port, he's trying to pick up that buff right in front of him. I've got to get around this island. And as we do so, it's time to hit the radar, pick him up, and hopefully put him out before he picks up that buff. Shell's on the way. He is going to grab that buff right as he goes out right there, but it's going to be the last thing he does in the game. Sunk. Opposing York stopped, waiting for this, this Healy buff to appear. So I've got a good opportunity here, but it's a long range, and these American Super Heavy shells take a long time to fall back to Earth at these ranges. So I'm not really going to be able to land the big, big hit there that I need to prevent him from picking up this buff. However, he is sort of nose-to-nose -nose with a Sharnhorst. He has to be a little frosty of that guy. He's still got over 30 seconds to wait before that buff shows up. And he decides, ooh, maybe I shouldn't be here. And he makes the mistake of continuing this turn, either not knowing that I'm not realizing I'm over here, not knowing I'm over here. I'm not sure which, but, um, well, it's not going to work out for him all that well. Two more Citadels, and Buffalo continues to do what she does best, and that is take enemy cruisers and turn them into paste. So, I mean, here you go, guys. In, what, right around 10 minutes of play, we've got 120,000 damage, four kills. I've had a big impact on this side of the map. Yes, the opposing team has done us some favors, but how, do we, how, how often do we talk about it in a World of Warships? Sometimes having a good game or having an effective team, all it requires of you is is to pay attention and take advantage of your opponents, uh, your the opposing teams' over aggressiveness, um, bad you know bad positioning, whatever. Sometimes that's all it takes. Stay alive, wait for your opponent to screw up, and when they do, take advantage of it. And that's kind of what you've seen here in this Our Buffalo game. Now I'm going to push back towards mid. I've got a buff, this Healy buff right in front of me that the York was trying for. He did not manage to pick it up. The opposing team now down to two ships. Game's basically over. Like we've crushed these guys. Um, arms race is a mode where I feel like patience is rewarded almost even more so than domination games, right? The buffs are, I won't say they're a trap. That's not true. That's not completely true. And it's sort of unfair, but they can be a bit of, uh, a, they're bait. Let's say it that way. They're bait, right? And if you're not careful, if you take the bait at the wrong time, if you take the bait before knowing what the price is going to be. It's very, it can be very, very bad for your team as now they're down to just the lone Edinburgh sitting on top of the key area, which is finally spawned here in the middle of the map. I won't bore you with the rest of the game. Um, this is, I don't get another shot in. I am going to pick up this buff for a little more, a uh, buff in front of me for a little more XP, um, but that's going to be the end of it here, and we'll go have a look at, uh, at how this game came out. So there you go, a cool million credits. Uh, 10,000 XP, I mean my, uh, you know, four kills, a whole bunch of hits, and that last, that last little buff I was telling you about. I'm pretty happy with this game. For a quick game, this, this game was maybe only about 12 minutes. I, this is not too shabby. Arms Race is a little interesting, right? Because of the way the buffs work in Arms Race, you'll sometimes get results out of ships that will surprise you. A ship like Buffalo here, I mean, my reload is continually getting buffed. So I already have a pretty solid reload, but it's getting even better as my team picks up buffs and suddenly you'll find yourself reloading these guns in like, you know, eight and a half seconds and you're like, whoa. And when that happens, you can do just absolutely silly things. 2,000 uh, base XP, four kills. Again, pretty happy with this result. Um, 
team played well. Obviously, we cleaned up, and nobody on the opposing team even has the thousand HP, uh, thousand XP. Their top ship, of course, <laughs> the bottom tier battleship, the West Virginia. 44. Not exactly a team that covered themselves in glory, but we took advantage of it and played well. You see there, as we've been saying throughout the video series, the majority of my damage off the back of those American piercing shells, both on the Friedrich and the cruisers we shot at. Of course, the HE, you're thro throwing so many shells, perfectly serviceable for wiping out destroyers. That's one of the things that I think... Um, you know, some people sometimes underestimate about Buffalo, right? They're used to the American heavies only having nine barrels. At Des Moines, it's all about the reload. But here at Buffalo, it's about the throw weight. You're throwing a lot of shells. You're throwing a Hindenburg salvo in terms of shells, right? Twelve shells going down range. You pay for it. Your reload is a little slow. But, man, those, those shells connect. They hurt. They hurt. So the, the alpha strike potential of Buffalo is probably the highest in the line. And you have to be able to learn and look for opportunities to take advantage of that when you can. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is uh, a summary, a short summary of Tier 9 American Heavy Cruiser USS Buffalo. I really feel like this is an incredibly underrated and incredibly misunderstood ship in the American Heavy Cruiser line. I have published a ton of quick cut videos on my channel trying to encourage people to revisit this ship because I think it has gotten a bad reputation because it's not Des Moines. Well, no, it's not Des Moines, but it's still really good, right? Like, this is still a very, very, very good ship. Very capable ship in the right hands. I know I've personally had games where I think I've surprised people with what I've been able to accomplish with it. And I would encourage you to play it a little more and, uh, and explore it for yourself and see if you can't do the same. All right, guys. Listen, thanks for watching. Y'all have a great day. Be careful. Wash your hands. I'll catch you next time.